All right, so we are installing our outside supports for our cans. These are our main beams for our roof here, which is kind of our main support system. Um, on the outside here, we just have little popple trees that we had cut down. It's not bearing much weight itself here because the wall is right here. We have a couple feet overhanging. We have a post in the center that's holding most of the weight. Level. Getting video of his dinky little tape right here. <laughs> Walmart special. <laughs> Um, are you sure this is really realistic? Probably not, but might as well start. Oh, give me a flashback. Oh yeah, good old days? Weeks of this.
too slow for what we're looking for, but. All right, you're fired, yeah. go. <laughs> trying to cob our walls today. We've got uh, probably 66 linear feet and then height wise we got about seven feet high. Our ratio is going to be one wheelbarrow of sand. I made this screen yesterday just out of quarter inch hardware cloth to then three five gallon buckets of clay. Okay, so this is our sifting station for our clay. We just have three five gallon buckets and that fits right underneath our hardware cloth, which is just quarter inch hardware cloth. And we're using that just to sift out any clumps, any rocks, um, any living matter as far as grass. And this is actually going pretty well. The clay is pretty dry. So we're just taking our hands after we scoop a pile right on the screen and it sifts off and cleans off pretty quickly and we can just uh, keep the ball rolling. So we're just making a little bowl of center where we can just pour in our water. And before we add in our water, we are evenly mixing our sand along with our clay. And it's about ready for the straw now. The muscles writhe. mention to you guys anything that we found super useful or everything that we've used for cobbing. Super basic, three five gallon buckets, one wheelbarrow. I use a masonry trowel sometimes to kind of like grade my uh, dirt through. Quarter inch hardware cloth to sift our soil so that we didn't get anything too large. We made sure that we got 30% clay, 70% sand. Shovel for shoveling the sand and clay. One tarp, a six by eight. We have a wagon that makes it really nice. We just wheel the wagon right into the space. And like a, something to water down the uh, walls to keep them moist. It's amazing how fast you have to re-wet the walls after you start cobbing. Yeah. Because no. the, the moisture that's just, oh, you know, the, the moisture you're spraying on there, it just gets sucked up right away by the 16 inches of uh, earth and clay that we've already put into the walls. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. It's raining. I don't care. I'm eating eggs. Good morning, guys. Um, we're coming to you from the tent in our backyard. We've been sleeping in our tent for like the past 
week or so as we've been doing some home renovation projects. We are currently working on cobbing. This morning we are working on part two of cobbing. So it's going to be the second coat. We're doing something a little differently. Hi. <laughs> For this part, we are actually going to be using a sprayer, so it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be applying it with an air compressor through a sprayer. And watch till the end to see what we're going to do for painting the walls. this 55 gallon pen. Pumps have been like such an essential thing for us on the farm. We do not have a well on the property so we have our holding tank and these big 55 gallon drums. We don't drink out of this but we use it for any projects, the garden, or animals. Hey, hon. You having fun yet? Just doing what we gotta do. You know, I'm back in my mind. All I'm thinking about is going to bed. <laughs> I'm sure. Be Sailor, don't have you out here shivering. <laughs> Oh, her lower lip is chattering. Yeah. Okay, we'll go in. Just doing everything. I gotta hold the camera. That was a lot of water.
Alright guys, so unfortunately that's not quite how you make goat's milk milk paint. It's not straight out of the udder, but let's show you actually what we did. If only it was that simple. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> we have an excess of milk right now, so we figured we'd just try to use our own goat's milk, separate it out because you have to use skim milk. So we have to separate, get the cream out, and then use the skim milk actually to uh, make the milk paint. So we figured we'd kind of just show you guys the process Delicious heavy whipping cream. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Oh. <laughs> Killing me. <laughs> what? Really? Oh, she went in there. So. Alright guys, so it is day two where we've had our vinegar and our skim milk sitting together in a bucket. And so now it is time to just strain it through our cheesecloth and add in the hydrated lime. This technically created a cheese, which is called cork. So to separate this out, there's quite a bit of whey. So we just need to strain it through our cheesecloth here. We want to discard all of the whey. We're catching the whey that's falling through the strainer and we will feed it to our dogs, our chickens, our pigs. They love it. So this is hydrated lime that we're adding in here. I have my lime, my water, and my cork in here. And what we're kind of looking for is a white paint. So what's really gonna bring out the white in our paint is the lime. So you kind of really don't wanna be stingy on that or you're really gonna have just like a pretty transparent looking. And it's super cheap. You know yeah, it's super cheap, so. Don't be stingy on it. Good job, Sayla. Good job. Should we put more in the bucket? Go ahead. There's one more second bucket got full. Okay. Get her sandal. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Not my book. Not my foot. No. There she goes, babe. See the brown tinge coming out from yeah. the clay? This is the comparison between our first layer and our second layer of milk paint. Even though 
though I kind of like the little rustic look. It has a little bit more texture. Hoping with a third coat it will still have some texture, but we can hopefully get rid of this inconsistency that we All right guys, the final reveal. We are officially done painting our walls. We ended up doing three coats and I'm pretty happy with the three. We were trying to debate whether we do our two or our three, but we did end up doing three just so we could kind of get more of a consistent color throughout. And after that third coat, it really kind of just blended everything together. Although I'm sure you can kind of see that we still have a little bit of texture in our walls. So if you were looking for like a completely flat white wall, I'm not sure this would be your route. We had some inconsistency here originally in our coloring so we had a really dark spot and then a lighter spot and after that third coat that kind of really blended it together so if you are having problems with that with your painting don't try to recover it by just painting over like a lighter area i would suggest probably just painting the whole surface all together all right guys, that wraps up today's video. Feel free to drop any questions or comments if you have below and like and subscribe.